Walgreens, Tesla, and Fubo. Who would have ever known I'd talk about these three stocks all in one video? Oh my gosh. If you had this on your bingo card, you are good at this game. We're going to talk about these three folks. Um, obviously, they're all making massive moves. Walgreens, Tesla, Fubo. Got to talk about them. What's going on here? My opinions, are they buys? Are they sells? Based upon the huge news. Huge news, obviously, in regards to WBA, I need to talk about. Huge news in regards to Tesla, I need to talk about. Oh, Elon. Oh, boy. Okay. And insane news in regards to Fubo that is, a, let's call it an indirect thing that's going on with Fubo. And um, there's a huge reason why the stock spiked massively. And don't be surprised if it spikes even bigger uh, this upcoming week here. And I want to get into that and kind of talk to you guys about what's going on there in my perspective. So busy video. I appreciate y'all joining me as always. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, this is probably the most random three stocks to speak about. It, Walgreens and Tesla, those two. I mean, because Walgreens is like one of those stocks like you either feel like this is a deal of the century. As a value investor, you feel like this is a value trap. And with Tesla, you know, Tesla Tesla bulls feel like this is an insane growth stock opportunity. Other people feel like this is a growth trap. Okay, so Walgreens, uh, you might have seen the news come out a couple days ago. Walgreens CEO Roz Brewer stepping down from the company. Okay, now before we get into all this and my opinions and all that, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Okay. This is huge news, even outside the business world. You see even outlets like CNN picking it up. And the reason being is Roz Brewer was a female and a minority. And I think she was only one of two, I believe, female minority CEOs in the entire S&P 500, if I recall. And so her failure at Walgreens is, uh, let's just call it, it let a lot of people down. A lot of people that were rooting for her are very let down in this situation. And so that's why it's way bigger than just, because usually a CEO steps down. It's like the business community will cover Bloomberg, CNN, or CNBC, excuse me, but not like CNN and in different outlets, New York Times. Like this is a huge deal, a huge deal way outside of just the business community. Her, I mean, she failed as a CEO. I don't know how else to put it. The stock was down over 50%. Um, I'm sure she tried her hardest and she had a great pedigree. I mean, she came from, uh, she was executive, a high level executive at Starbucks. She was a CEO of Sam's Club in the past. I mean, she had the track record to have made a success here. And, um, t you know, for the stock to have gone down over 50%, I mean, it's just was horrible, horrible. Okay. I mean, the, the five year on Walgreens is awful. It's now 65%, right? and fell more obviously on the news of her being let go. Okay, so what's going on here in regard, regards to Walgreens? Is the stock a buy, a sell, anything like that, okay? The first place we gotta start is we gotta remember, you know, the most recent numbers out of Walgreens. Unfortunately, Roz and the team, they missed on kind of the EPS side, right? You don't wanna see that. Uh, but they did beat very nice on revenue, and that kind of goes to the opposite that you would think in regards to Walgreens. If anything, you would think Walgreens would miss on revenue and beat on EPS, but it went the other way. And they're dealing with a lot of theft in their stores and other things like that. And, um, you know, this whole theft thing in retail, it's out of hand. I think we all know it by now. It's sad when you see it. And, I mean, I go into these Walgreens stores, and it's insane, man. Uh, even, in, even in Walgreens stores in not super bad areas, I mean, so much stuff is locked up now. Now, I understand that, you know, prevents from a lot of theft, but also that's going to prevent from sales. If you make people's, you got to remember, if you're Walgreens, you're selling convenience. That's always been what Walgreens sells. That's why it's on every flip and flapjack and corner throughout the United States of America. Same thing with CVS. You're selling convenience. When you make things more inconvenient, like you got to push a button to go grab this $14 item, right? And you got to wait for somebody to come unlock the thing. It's, it's inconvenient. It's not going to be good for sales. It is good for hoping for, you know, to prevent theft and things like that. That's something that we've been dealing with uh, in this high inflationary environment, obviously, but it is what it is. So that's something to kind of keep in mind there. Now, it is important. We do give some respect to Roz because she did beat a lot of the EPS numbers for you know most of her time as CEO. This was her first quarter as CEO. Beat, 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 beat. You know, it was a lot of beats up until very recently. You know, started to miss uh, obviously in this most recent quarter in terms of on the EPS side at least, right? Now, the other problem was they didn't just miss. But then they took down guidance as well. Our revised guidance takes an approximately cautious forward view in light of consumer spending uncertainty while still demonstrating clear, value, clear drivers of a return to operating growth next fiscal year, CEO Brewer said. This was in their latest uh, conference call in earnings, which was about, oh gosh, when was that? That was probably two months ago now at this point in time. Yeah, probably two months ago. And so 
But that's never good when you've got to miss numbers and then you've got to take down guidance as well. Never something you want to see. Now, this timing is really strange that all of a sudden she steps down as CEO because it was just a month ago or so that the CFO stepped down. And so you, no one ever likes to see CFO step down. The only thing worse than seeing your CFO step down is your CEO step down, okay? Walgreens Boots Alliance, which was on July 27th today, announced the departure of James, the Executive Vice President and Global Chief Financial Officer. He will leave WBA in mid-August to pursue an opportunity in the technology sector. I mean, that was one of those things that just kind of came out of nowhere. And so when you see a CFO and now the CEO hitting the door, you got to ask yourself, what is going on here? This looks like a disaster zone. This looks scary because you don't just see CEOs and CFOs, like who's even leading the company at that point in time, right? If you had the CEO and the CFO out the door, it almost looks like maybe the CEO and the CFO had a view of where they should take the company in the future. And maybe the board of directors didn't have that same view. That's my personal opinion as somebody that's been in this market 15 years looking at this. And so both of them said, well, you know what, if you're not going to do what we think is best for this company, then, you know, we're going to have to depart. Because if you're wondering who decides who's these high level executives, it's a board of directors. The board of directors chooses who's this. And how do you get in this board of directors? You're voted in by the shareholders. Okay, so it's something very important. Now, who controls the board? Who's big dog? Well, the executive chairman is this man right here, Stefano Pacina. Okay, he's big dog there. So I don't know. There's a, this is a little, you know, we can call it conspiracy theory or whatever. There could be a potential where maybe the CEO and CFO felt like we need to cut the dividend. We need to cut the dividend and reinvest that money back into the business. Maybe Stefano is like, uh, I never get gains on my shares. So the only way I make money off this flip and flapjack and stock, which he's a huge shareholder of, he owns about uh, somewhere between 16 and 17% of the entire Walgreens company. Okay. So he's big dog there. If he says, no, you're not cutting the dividend. <laughs> you're not cutting the dividend. Like, it's pretty much as simple as that. Okay. There's other board members as well, but keep in mind, like when you own 17% of the shares approximately, like what you say is going to go, you're going to hold way more weight than anybody else. So there's just a potential of what happened. There's another potential of maybe Stefano was just like, you guys are doing a bad job. Okay. And, uh, our stock price just keeps going down. You are not reiterating clear enough the vision for the company. And I want you out of here. So that's another potential, right? All I know is if we could know what's going on behind closed doors, I would almost guarantee you it's not good. It's not good. There's got to be fighting going on. There's got to be a lot of uh, soap opera drama going on behind closed doors in this situation. I can tell you that. You don't get the CEO and CFO just all both step down within you know a matter of a month, month and a half of each other without there being a lot of drama behind closed doors. Now, when it comes to Stefano, his net worth is plummeting as Walgreens stock has been plummeting. I mean, he peaked out in 2017 at about a $14 billion net worth. And now the poor man's all the way down to under $7 billion now at this point in time. Holy smoke, is that no joke? He's all the way down to 246 on the billionaire list. Oh, it's embarrassing. I mean, my gosh, that's got to be so tough. But in all seriousness, right? You know, you might think, oh, he's 82 years old. Does he even care about? Absolutely. Absolutely, man. This is scoreboard. You don't want to see your net worth dropping billions and billions of dollars year after year after year. And so I think there's something going on behind closed doors. There's a lot of fighting and there's visions for where Walgreens should go in the future and visions where it shouldn't go in the future. And um, obviously that is what it is, right? Now, if you don't know me in, in my history in regards to Walgreens, I worked for Walgreens from about 2008 to 2010 as just a youngin while I was going to college and I was running track. And, you know, I just kind of learned about the business while being there. And I wanted to be, actually get into the management ranks at Walgreens, but they weren't uh, hiring at that time. This is like during the, the great financial crisis. If anything, they were cutting manager roles and whatnot. So that's why I ended up getting the job at Quick Trip. But what I learned at Walgreens was fascinating. I learned things while I worked at Walgreens that you, you just like, you had trouble even conceiving these things. One thing I learned working at Walgreens was I always thought, man, Walgreens so expensive. Why not? Why doesn't everybody just go to Walmart? Like that was something I always thought of, right? 
And keep in mind, back then, I had such a limited amount of money. Heck, I was making eight-something dollars an hour. I'm like, why would people even come here, man? You can get everything here cheaper at, at Walmart. Like, why don't I just go to Walmart, right? And I learned about how much inconvenience really matters to folks. And there was another fascinating thing I, I saw, which was how many people used, like, EBT, food stamps, at Walgreens, at Walgreens, which was always crazy to me. But, and, and do keep in mind, remember the years I worked for Walgreens. And remember, I worked in one of the hardest hit cities in the United States of America during the great financial crisis. Phoenix, Arizona got hit extremely hard with the housing bust and everything that happened there. But it was always crazy to me how many people would come in and pay with EBT at Walgreens where you're going to, it's like a lot more expensive. Like, you're, you know, why not go to Walmart? Like, like, but just convenience once again for a lot of folks. And then I really also learned about how much of an emphasis they really put on the pharmacy part. The whole retail operations is all just to get people in the door. It's just for foot traffic. You know, they want to try to do their best at presenting and selling items, but it's not. It's not what they actually care about. That's just for show more than anything and to get people in the store. But ultimately, they want you going back there to that pharmacy. Okay. So that was another thing I really learned at Walgreens while I worked there over time. And um, I mean, I can't speak for the company over the past... Uh, you know, 12, 13 years uh, in terms of internally how it's run. But back then it was a pretty well-run company, okay? Now, it's interesting because I was watching Fast Money the other, night, the other day and they were speaking about, I'm going to kill this freaking fly. So I'm watching Fast Money and uh, they were obviously speaking about this situation. Tim Seymour says he owns Walgreens and he was talking about how disappointed he is and he made a great point. He's like, you know, I've lost so much money in this stock, and this is supposed to be one of the most stable stocks in the stock market. Like, the reason you buy Walgreens is for stability, usually. And Walgreens was always one of those companies seen as, like, a recession, bad economy, good economy. It doesn't matter. Like, Walgreens is going to hold through, and it's going to hold through much better than other stocks, right? And that has certainly not been the situation. I just showed you guys the five year. It's lost 65% of its value in the last five years. And he's like, what's the point of holding a stock like this if it's not even seen as, if it can't even be stable? And now the company's trading at a Ford P of like five or six, which is just like mind blowing, but it's already been a cheap stock. At a Ford P of 10, it looked cheap. At a Ford P of 12, it looked cheap, right? And it's just got cheaper. And so you have this really like fascinating situation going on. And that's kind of how I feel with Walgreens stock as well. It's like one of those that you're holding and it's like, this isn't even like a really a safety stock anymore. Like it used to be years ago. I mean, now stocks like Apple and Microsoft are the state safety stocks. And you know, you, in the past, those were not the safety stocks, but look at how well those stocks held up last year. Look at how well those stocks have held up this year. I mean, it's incredible. Apple and Microsoft are now replaced like some of these companies like a Walgreens that was always seen as just like, you know, people need the stuff in there. People need to go get a box of Band-Aids. People need to go get some Tylenol. People need to use the pharmacy. Like it's needs, needs, needs. And yet the stock has done anything but act like a needs-based stock. It's acted like it's a, I don't know, high tech stock that just loses 65% of its value in the tech bubble, right? Now, in regards to Walgreens, the major competitive threat is Amazon, right? That's, that's who's seen as a longer term major competitive threat. Walgreens always had a million competitors, obviously other pharmacy chains, CVS, uh, Walmart, Kroger, all those guys undercut price. That's always been there, but it's seen as Amazon. Now the, the interesting thing with Amazon is they could, they could potentially beat Walgreens at convenience, which is something Walmart, Kroger, and others could never do. Walgreens always more convenient. It's on every corner. It's in and out easy. It's got drive-throughs. And so Walmart and Kroger could never compete with that. They could only compete with price. What if Amazon can beat Walgreens at convenience and price? Oh boy, now we're talking. But the issue when it comes to a lot of these pharmaceutical related products is, you know, especially with a lot of them, you can't just leave them on your porch. Like that's not how it works. Okay. You can't just leave them at your front door. Um, for a lot of these different things, it's illegal to even, you know, send them like that. So, so that's going to be a whole process that's going to need a while to kind of work through there. But there's no doubt Amazon is certainly a competitive threat. But I mean, geez, is there anybody that Amazon isn't a competitive threat to? That's the other way you got to look at it, right? They're always going to be the boogeyman in the room. When you're, it's just bottom line with that, right? Now, in regards to Walgreens, the dividend yield is now a shocking 8% plus on this stock. It's over 8%, folks. I mean, what are we talking about here? That's insane. Like who would ever known Walgreens would be yielding 8% plus? And we'll see if they ever want to cut. 
They don't need, I mean, think about it. They could cut the dividend in half and it would still be over 4% yield, which is still a big dividend yield. Over 4% yield, that's big. 8% is just astronomically high. So it doesn't look like they have to cut, but certainly if they wanted to cut, they could and use that money for, but I don't know if Stefano really wants to do that. I'll tell you what, if they don't cut the dividend, I almost guarantee you it's because Stefano says no, guarantee you. And then that will really show why the CEO and CFO were leaving. Because my thought is, especially with the CFO leaving first, he looks at the numbers all the time. And he's like, I think we should cut the, this dividend. I think it would be safer for the long term of this company. And we should use that over here to do the blah, blah, blah. And Stefano's like, I'm 82. I want money now, man. I'm, I'm certainly not making any money on the stock price. So we'll see. We'll see. Okay. If, if the dividend does get cut, I think that will be because then I think that what that will show is like Stefano and the, the board probably just wanted to get rid of the CEO and CFO because they felt like they hadn't done it well, a good enough job. Okay. Now, in my opinion, Walgreens, is it a buy? Is it a sell? Oh, I would lean a little more toward buy than sell. Um, at the end of the day, you do have to keep in mind, I understand how bad the stock price has done. You got to understand we're now dealing with a stock that has a Ford P in the five or six range, dealing with a company that ultimately has beat numbers pretty dang consistently for a long time. And you also have to think about it in terms of like, can it get any worse than this? Your CEO and your CFO just stepped down. Uh, no, <laughs> it doesn't get any worse than that. Like that's as bad as it gets. I mean, your CEO and CFO both stepping down within a month and a half of each other. Like that's insanity crazy. Okay, folks. So yeah, I would lean toward buying over selling. I think we're at a point with Walgreens where it's probably max fear priced in kind of similar to like Foot Locker, like we saw about a week or two ago, where it just had that last flush down. And then um, ever since you've kind of seen Foot Locker kind of recovering, wouldn't be surprised at all if you see a very similar phenomenon happen in Walgreens over time. Okay. We'll see though. Okay. I'm down $6,400 on my shares. Now do keep in mind, I've made a bunch of dividend money in this over time. So the number's not that bad. Maybe I'm down, I don't know, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, something like that. But nonetheless, it still just has not treated me well. Okay. All right. Next one up here. We're going to talk about good old Tesla, my Esla. So when it comes to Tesla, uh, yeah, the stock obviously got hit Friday very hard. It was down over 5%. We we're down over 20K on that one. We're down to our last $368,000 in gains on good old Tesla, my Esla, 938% on this one. When it comes to Tesla, here's what's going on. They just cut price. I'm so sick of t talking about Tesla price cuts. It seems like every freaking week I got to talk about Elon just cut prices again, okay? So they dropped Molex. Uh, to $80,000, a $41,000 reduction. Okay, we're switching. Hello. A $41,000 reduction from the start of this year. What? Okay, so now the S and the X are going to be eligible for these tax credits. That's cool. That's good. But man, is this absolutely crazy, right? So check this out. Since the start of the year, the Model S started the year uh, about 105. It's down to 75 now. The Model X started the year at 120. It's down to starting at 80. <laughs> I mean... This is, this is epic price cuts. I mean, if this was, if they cut $4,000, okay, they cut $4,000, put me to sleep, okay, on a $100,000 vehicle, that's nothing. It's like 4%, right? $41,000 since the beginning of the year? Yeah, that, that, that's Elon on a, a mission, okay? Elon's on a mission to absolutely decimate, it seems like everybody else, and he just wants to move volume. He's like, I don't care. I don't care. I will cut price. I'll do whatever I have to. I am about moving units. That's all he cares about. Um, he doesn't care about margins right now. He doesn't care about profitability. It's If it's not clear already, I don't know what's going to make it more clear. And I've been talking about this for pretty much this entire year. Elon does not care about margins right now. He does not care about profitability at all. At all. Not even like 1%. Like maybe a little. No. No. Okay. All he cares about is volume. That's it. And so that creates us into a dilemma in the short term where margins are probably just going to keep going down because I can guarantee you they haven't saved $41,000 in cost on these vehicles. They might, you know, find ways to save a few hundred bucks here, a few thousand bucks there, but it's not 41,000. This is coming straight off margin. This is coming straight off profitability. Okay. And so ultimately it's a great time if you're an S or an X in the market for that. But the problem is if you're really down the Tesla rabbit hole, you see Elon keep cutting price, keep cutting price in Tesla in general, right? I don't want to put it all on Elon, but um, you see them keep cutting price. And at the same time, you're like, why wouldn't I just wait? 
Seriously, like, like why, why go buy an S or X unless you absolutely have to tomorrow? And that's the problem if you keep cutting price and keep cutting price. Because let's say you were after, bought after the first cut. You're like, oh, yes, 95K. Woo. I'm, okay, now it's 75K. So who's to say in another month, three months, whatever, it's not going to be 69K, right? 69,420. That would be an Elon move there to make on the S, right? Who's to say the Model X isn't going to 69? <laughs> so these are the sorts of things you gotta you got to run through these scenarios with Elon. And he's just on a mission to move as many units as he can possibly move. And he doesn't care at all about margins of profitability. He, if he had to take Tesla into net loss, he would take it in net loss. That It's clear. It's clear. He doesn't care at all right now about profitability. So it is what it is. Um, you know, as a long Tesla shareholder, this is stuff you have to kind of go through. But uh, yeah, it's not too fun in the short term. I can tell you that it's not too fun in the short term. But uh, the long term remains intact. And I just, you don't want to compete with Tesla, man. They're just, they're nasty to compete with. They're beating you on tech. They're beating you on the vehicles. And they're beating you on the price. You lost. Like Tesla won. But it's just not going to look like it in the short term profitability numbers. I can tell you that. Okay. Fubo. So Fubo up a massive 13% on Friday. Do not be surprised at all if the stock... Is three to four dollars uh, this upcoming week, and why? What's going on here? Well, they got pretty much the best indirect news they could have possibly got. Hey, so Charter and Disney are fighting. Okay, so Charter, which is I think it's usually around the second biggest cable company out there, from my understanding. Basically, Disney took down their channels, ESPN specifically, and all those sorts of channels. And so this is the worst time this could have happened, right? With U.S. Uh, tennis championships going on. But ultimately, college football started this weekend, okay? College football craziness. And so imagine you're one of these customers and all of a sudden, you know, you're looking forward to watching your, all your college football teams that you'd like to watch and you can't watch them, right? You're going to be pissed. You're going to want to cancel your cable subscription and go somewhere else, right? Clearly. And this, this stuff happens all the time. And so this is a bad look. And, and keep in mind, NFL is about to kick off. NFL is about to kick off too. Now, college matters more because uh, ESPN owns so many rights to so many different college games. So for college football fans, it's even a bigger deal. But it also matters for, for NFL fans as well because ESPN carries Monday Night Football. They also do a uh, Sunday morning show that a lot of people love as well on ESPN. So, and never mind that, plus all the Disney channels in general, like it's a bad, it's a bad look. Okay. Now, Fubo always gets a huge boost up in basically Google Trends data. This is Google Trends data. They always get a huge boost up when college football and NFL is about to start in general because it's the known as the service that people sign up for um, if you're a sports fan, right? Especially with how convenient it is, how easy it is, um, the fact that you can cancel any time. But we know with Fubo, like most people sign up and end up keeping it long term because they love the service, right? And they also have a, a ability to watch four games on your big screen at once, which is something I always love to do, uh, certainly on Saturdays, right? Because there's a bunch of college football games that you want to watch at the same time and so you can put four of them literally you can put two of them on the screen at once three of them four games um, on one screen at once which is magic because usually the only way you could do that is if you had four huge flat screen tvs instead you could put it on just one right it's magical and so fubo's in this insanely sweet situation now and by the way youtube tv's got a benefit from this as well believe me on that so if you're a google shareholder this is also great news for you as well okay and so with fubo this is great short term um certainly they're going to attract a ton of customers. Some of those customers will certainly say, stay with Fubo long-term. Some of them might cancel um, because maybe they're in some sort of contract with the cable company, but they're going to come back over time because Fubo kicks their ass, okay? Believe me, I've had Fubo for a while, and yeah, it's way better than cable. <laughs> like Way, way better than cable. And so that's the situation that's happening there. This is the best thing that could have ever happened for Fubo. The longer this fight goes on for, the better it is for Fubo the better it is for Fubo. And also, it's not a good look for Disney either. So Disney could be a little more, let's call it timid, when going back in for negotiations down the road, whether it be with a YouTube TV, Fubo, or others, because this is not going to be a good look for them any either, because this hurts their business model as well. Okay, so both sides are hurt by this. Um, it's like, you know, a good saying on, of war, like no one wins. Both, both sides really lose in the end, right? You think you won, but you really lost. So, but nonetheless, the only winners in this YouTube TV and Fubo, massive winners from this. Now, in regards to Fubo, 
the main other thing that, you know, in terms of this stock getting out of the gulag, going $5 plus, and then, you know, hopefully reaching double digits, going 10 and, and above, and getting on that track, we got to see continue to see profitability come through. The user numbers are great. They're going to probably be shockingly great for the next several quarters, um, but we need to see profitability come through. And so that's what we're waiting on in regards to Fubo. Once that happens, then we can talk about this becoming a real deal Holyfield stock and uh, having a lot of fun in this one over time. So it's a process. I appreciate everybody joining me as always. Thanks so much for being here, folks. Um, yeah, if you'd like to join my private group, I invite you to apply. There'll be pinned comment down there to join us in there. Much love and have a great day.